in a world of intrigue and espionage. A single man fights the overwhelming evil of the Axis. His name, the Spy Smasher. Republic Pictures was not a major studio. In Hollywood, they were the kings of what was called Poverty Row. They were a lower tier studio. And originally, they started off as six smaller studios that were spread across Los Angeles. They merged in 1935 and set up their studio operation in, where else? Studio City. In addition to their film studios, Republic also owned a movie ranch in Encino. And it was at these two locations where the Spy Smasher movie serial was shot. As for Spy Smasher, he made his first appearance in Wiz Comics number two. He was the creation of Bill Parker and C.C. Beck. These are the same guys that brought you the original Captain Marvel. You know, the character we now call Shazam. And in his first comic book adventure, Spy Smasher takes on a spy ring led by a diabolical villain known as The Mask. Spy Smasher's alter ego is Naval Officer Alan Armstrong, and he is assigned the case from his superior officer, Admiral Corby, as Alan Armstrong. He is romantically involved with the Admiral's daughter, Eve. Initially, Spy Smasher didn't really break out of Wiz Comics because Captain Marvel was the star. Republic Pictures had released the Captain Marvel movie serial, and right from the start, this movie serial was a huge hit, and Republic wanted more. Intellectual properties from comic books for the very first time became a hot commodity in Hollywood. Editors at Fawcett tried to push for Mr. Scarlet and Pinky, the lead feature of WoW Comics, but Republic didn't bite. Studio executives stumbled across Spy Smasher, and with World War II dominating every aspect of American life, they felt he was the perfect character for the time. Many film historians consider Spy Smasher to be one of the best movie serials ever made. The script is tight, the dialogue flows easy. Spy Smasher makes the kind of quips that comic book superheroes are known for. Like when he enters the lair of some counterfeiters. Got change for a five. The cliffhangers are dramatic. Some characters are killed off, which adds a level of peril to the story. Also, the camera work and lighting is a step up from your typical movie serial. The sets, special effects, and stunts are truly amazing. This was Republic Pictures doing what they did at their very best. So, with all that being said, let me tell you about the people who brought Spy Smasher to the silver screen. Spy Smasher is played by actor Kane Richmond. Richmond originally worked in regional film distribution out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. He came out to Hollywood for a business meeting and a Universal executive told him that he was a handsome man and that he should do a screen test. He did the screen test and got signed by the studio. In his first credited work, he got the lead role as Kid Roberts in a boxing film called Leather Pushers. During that production, he got his nose broken not once, but twice. Throughout the 1930s, he landed small parts, but appeared in some big movies like Newt Rockney All-American and Boys Town. After doing Spy Smasher, Richmond would go on to play another costume superhero, The Shadow. The character of Eve Corby was played by Marguerite Chapman. She was a model and cover girl out of New York City. She was in advertisements for Campbell's Soup and Chesterfield Cigarettes. She caught the eye of millionaire Howard Hughes, and Hughes brought her out to Hollywood to make movies, and to probably do some other things if you know the reputation of Howard Hughes. When World War II broke out, Chapman became a hostess at the Hollywood Canteen. For those of you who don't know about the Hollywood Canteen, it was a servicemen's club designed to be a morale booster for the troops. Hollywood celebrities staffed the canteen and mingled with soldiers. Chapman was a singer and a dance girl there. And if you were in the service and fortunate enough to make it to Hollywood, you could go to the canteen and sign her dance card. And when it was your turn, she would dance with you. For her part in the war effort, she received a number of honors from the armed forces, which included being named Miss Breathless 1943. 
and for the next three decades, she remained a working actress. Her final role was in 1977 with a TV guest appearance on the detective show Barnaby Jones. In the 1990s, James Cameron offered her the part of Old Rose Dawson for the movie Titanic, but unfortunately she was too ill and frail to accept the part. Just like the comic, the villain of the Spy Smasher movie serial is The Mask. And The Mask is played by actor Hans Schum. He found himself very busy in the early 1940s playing sadistic Nazis, a part that he actually played with pride. He felt it was his small part to help defeat the Nazis. You see, Schum was a German, but he was also a Jew. In the 1920s, he was a notable German stage actor and he bounced back and forth between the German stage and Broadway in New York City. And when the Nazis took over, they outlawed Jewish actors from being on stage or in film, which forced him to remain in the States. Schum went out to Hollywood in the 1930s before World War II, and he was in a lot of films, but most of his work goes uncredited. Occasionally, when he had a major role, he would use the name Andre Pola. He did this out of fear of the Nazis. He was very afraid that if his name appeared in film credits, it might trigger some sort of retaliation against his family and friends still in Germany. One of his film roles was that of a captured German sergeant in the Humphrey Bogart film Sahara. William Whitney was the director of Spy Smasher. He was also the director of the Captain Marvel movie serial, which came out the year before. When comparing the two serials, you can see that Whitney's skills have greatly improved. His sense of drama is better. His fight scenes and action sequences have evolved and are far superior. Director Quentin Tarantino gives Whitney credit as the creator of the modern fight scene in film. And in this serial, you can see why he gets that praise. Spy Smasher's fight scenes have no contemporary equal that I can think of. Of course, these awesome fight scenes and action sequences can't be all attributed to Whitney. He had an amazing staff of stuntmen working on Spy Smasher. And I would like to take a moment and talk about three of them. The supervising stuntman was Yakima Knut. Knut was a champion rodeo rider. And when he first came out to Hollywood, early Western actor Tom Mix copied his look. After they met for the first time, Mix borrowed Knut's rodeo clothing and had a tailor copy them. Knut did not invent trick riding or falling off a horse, but he is often credited as the stuntman who made it look really cool. Before Spy Smasher, he wowed audiences in John Ford's stagecoach. He did the famous runaway stagecoach horse jumping stunt doubling for John Wayne. Years later, he was the stunt supervisor on the Charlton Heston film Ben-Hur. He was most proud of the chariot race scene because no animals were injured during the filming. The next stuntman is Kerry Lofton. Some years after making Spy Smasher, he was known as the best car guy in the business. In Spy Smasher, there's a lot of car chases and motorcycle scenes. Lofton is more than likely the guy behind the wheel. Over the decades, he would be responsible for some of the most memorable car work ever seen in film. He drove the green Mustang in Bullet. He was the truck driver in Steven Spielberg's Duel. He was the principal stunt driver in the Herbie movies. And the list goes on and on and on. Smokey and the Bandit, Stroker Ace, Christine, Maximum Overdrive, The Wild One, Patton, Moving On, and BJ and the Bear. The French Connection has one of the greatest car chases ever filmed. And Lofton wasn't the guy driving the car, but he was a consultant that helped stage that fantastic scene. He went into semi-retirement at the age of 77, and his last driving work was in the Patrick Swayze film Black Dog. Last, but certainly not least, is stuntman David Sharp. He was the guy responsible for those amazing leaps in the Captain Marvel movie serial. He was a two-time national tumbling champion and is credited for being in over 5,000 films. Interesting note about Sharp. His relationship with actor Tony Curtis may be the inspiration for the Rick Dalton-Cliff Booth relationship in the Quentin Tarantino film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Sharp was Curtis's stand-in, stunt double, gopher, wingman, and friend. It was well known in Hollywood, if you hired Tony Curtis, you also hired Sharp. 
Sharp also has another tie-in to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Sharp also is the stunt supervisor on the FBI TV show, which is one of the TV shows that the character Rick Dalton appears on. In addition to being the stunt supervisor on the show, Sharp was also a stunt double for the show's lead actor, Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. In case you haven't seen a movie serial, or you want to see one of the best examples of a movie serial, I highly recommend this one. Spy Smasher is available on YouTube and any number of streaming services. So that's it for Spy Smasher. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the like button and leave some comments down below. I really love to hear about other movie serials you would like me to review. Or other superhero films, I might start doing that. I recently saw the Russian superhero movie, The Guardians. It was a lot of fun. I, I should do a video about it. Anyway, uh, one more thing before I go. Uh, my computer is dying. It's 10 years old or 11 years old, something like that. I started a Patreon account to help fundraise to buy a new one. I appreciate your support. Every nickel and dime helps, and uh, the link is in the description box down below. Also, uh, the 10-year-old neighbor girl set this box up for me. Well, she didn't do it all by herself. Uh, her little brother helped out. And according to them, if you aim your phone camera at the box, it will take you right to my Patreon account. Let me know if this voodoo works. I'm a firm believer in getting what you paid for, and I paid them in Pringles potato chips. <laughs> you laugh. They went through three cans in five minutes. Well, that's about it for me. Take it easy, everyone. Hope you have a great day. Bye.